Hello YouTube friends. Welcome to The Last Homely House. I'm Kate and today I want to tell you all about a visit I made a couple of weeks ago to the Festival of Quilts. It's a, a festival that's held every year and I've been to it a few times but before the pandemic. I had a couple of years off and I went back this year um, and really really enjoyed it. It was really interesting and I met some interesting people and I want to tell you about them and I had the best time. I also bumped into quite a lot of people who recognised me from this channel and said hello and that was absolutely lovely. So I'd like to say hello to, to all of you who came to festival and who I said hello to. It was brilliant. But I did meet some interesting people uh, who, whose quilts were on display. Now at the end of this video, the second part of this video, uh, there's a really amazing interview with two of my favourite people. And so stick around and watch that. Also, at the very end of this video, I'm going to show you the things that I bought and the plans I have for what I might make. Uh, but at the first thing you see as we start the, uh, the little video is um, the gallery devoted to Danny Amazonas's quilts. Now this might be a quilter that you're familiar with. Uh, I've seen his quilts here and there but to see so many of them in in person and to see that amazing pixelation of fabric and, and, the, and the pictures that he makes. And this is what amazes me about fabric is you know you have the general idea of sewing this piece of fabric to this piece of fabric and you give that idea to several people and you end up with such a wide variety of results. And the first person that we're going to talk to is a guy called Chris English, who is an absolutely lovely guy from Huddersfield in Yorkshire. And he'll tell us about his quilting journey and the quilts that he makes. And he's a really interesting guy. And so without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to this video and stick around to see the things that I bought and the things that I plan to do with them, but definitely to, uh, to, to, to hear what my two favourite quilters uh, had to say about the work that they do. It's very busy here at the Festival of Quilts and I feel a bit of a twit filming, but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's go for a walk. having a lovely time wandering around the Festival of Quilts and I've just met Chris. Hi. Hi and I'm gonna chat with Chris. We're having camera issues and so you might not have us both in frame but we'll see what happens. We'll make it work. Um, well we'll try if we, unless we can get someone to film it for us. Okay so oh you little angel. Thank I you. have got someone to film it for me. So thank you very much indeed yeah, mystery you. lady. <laughs> uh, so Chris. Hi. Talk. So this is my quilts, it's in contemporary. I make a lot of my quilts from recycled fabric, so I like to use fabric I find in charity shops and old clothes and all that sort of stuff. And I think it's really important to recycle fabric. I like to mix in different fabrics I've got and collected over the years. And I kind of buy fabric and I know that I'll use it. And so when I get it all in a quilt, and I also like to, um, like these different sections, are all samples of quilts that I've started and ideas and then 
kind of just mashed it together. How long have you been making quilts for and what got you started? About six years. Yeah. So I've been quilting for about six years and I've always been interested in textiles and print and colour. Colour's important yes. and pattern and all that stuff. Colour's so, vitally important, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and I think quilting is just, for me, the way to express that. And so what's your technique then? How do you design? How do you plan? Well, I don't really. Yes. It just kind of, kind of comes together. So as I say, I'll have a go at a smaller technique like these half square triangles and then I quite like the result and then I'd like, I had another go, I did some more and then just, I like the, the contrast of the yellows and that it's a similar technique but it looks quite different. And so I'm seeing here you've got some hand quilting and yeah. then some machine quilting. Yeah, so I like to mix hand quilting and machine quilting because I like the contrast. I like the contrast of the big stitches versus the much narrower machine quilting. And, and I think it gives it an interesting texture as well, so you've got a change in texture from the, the kind of quite far apart big stitch quilting with the narrow machine quilting. I agree, I really do agree. I think it, I was drawn to it straight away. I think oh, it's absolutely you. beautiful. Thanks. Absolutely great. So is this your first time at the festival? No, I've been coming for the last few years. Okay. Uh, last four or five years, I think. Okay. Yeah, and I should always try and enter because I love festival because anyone can enter. Yes. And it's not jury, so... Yes. You can, everyone can enter and yeah. you see some amazing quilts. I think it's very accessible for people. So, and you've, this isn't the only quilt you've got, is it? No, I've got three more. Shall we go, shall we walk around and have a look at some more? Yeah, absolutely. You, this lady here, I'm Thank just you. going to show you. <laughs> this lady here has done the filming for me. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Indeed. Congratulations, Thank it's Thank beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we'll find one. one of them. Here's one. This isn't the art quilt, this is in modern, which is a very vague category definition. <laughs> Is this oh, yours? Yes, yeah, someone's taking a photo of it. Amazing. Oh, wow. Do you like that one? I do. He made it. I recognise you. <laughs> That's happening Hello. a lot today. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. And you I too. Look at your Hello. Uh, And videos. what's your name? <laughs> I'm Pauline, the cafeteria. Would you like? Would you mind being on the channel? Because I'm filming Chris while he's oh, talking. Are you? Have yeah. you, you've made this, yeah, have you? Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about this with Chris. Isn't it awesome? It is. Thanks. Textures and, but it, it's so sort of haphazard, but I'm sure it isn't. I'm no, sure you've planned it, is it? it, is. it oh, so, like, works. these different sections are all like different samples that I've created, and like back at the other quilt, I've just joined them together. And then I've had this piece of twelve for ages, and it's beautiful, and I love it. And I didn't know how to use it, but then I thought I'll use it so, and I'll stick so it on there. So I've incorporated it. So I've incorporated it, and then I've got the the, the blue and the orange are from like mechanics overall, so it's all old fabric. From mechanics overall. Yeah, so you can look if you look closely. They've got are like stains bit and a bit oil stains. Uh -huh, it's clean, but it's you know. It's, it's, but then it's yeah. equally these bits of toile in here. They were super expensive, yeah. but like a tiny scrap. So it's a real mix of it stuff. It is, isn't it? And I've got some badges that I've attached that yeah. um, yes, yes, talk yes. about various causes, yeah. save the whale, and all sorts of stuff, which I think is a way to. That's lovely. That's yeah. Lovely section as well. Are there, are some really so there's some, fabrics some mechanics there? fabrics in there, right? Yeah, there are. And but the bits the bits I really like are where you can you see where it's been faded and that's probably the inside of a pocket yes. or something. And I, but you get, I tell you, a, a me, old mechanics overall is one pound fifty yeah. and you get so much fabric. So much fabric. So much fabric. And it's this is you know this goes on my bed, it's super warm and it, it's a working quilt come together over a long time yes yes yeah it does it kind of has that feel yeah so some of these pieces will have been joined and then set aside yeah. and then gone back to and then if i found something or made something i think actually yeah that'll fit yeah. with that because there's some old shirts here well, yes that's old shirts yeah denim that's old shirting yeah and can i ask what the back of it is yeah absolutely because you're allowed to show us the back because it's your quilt the back is kind oh, of okay a, Fabrics, yeah, yeah, more recycled fabrics. And this is like from, I got it in France, at a flea market in France. Yeah, it's so it's changed how you look at flea markets and I love markets. flea markets. Yeah, because you get markets. all your fabrics. Uh, just turn up in odd places, don't yeah. they? Yeah, and I, I think if you see them, buy them, and you yeah. know, you, I think people should trust their instinct with fabric. Yeah. And if you see it, buy it, and you know you'll use it eventually. Yes. Because we've all got lots of fabric so, sashes. Well, I have a lot of fabric. You do. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> but it's about how to store it. How do you store it? Do you have a, a, an enormous, like me, boxes and boxes full of fabric? Yeah. Or do you have all my 
planes here. Or no, it's, it's, not, it's not organised at all because I believe like some of these different combinations have happened because, because I just kind of because of the chaos. Because you've chucked them out on the chucked table. Chucked them out and they're just there, and then that. they kind of find their way to each other. I think. And I then love that. it's a bit organic. Yeah, exactly. Intuition. Yeah, very much. A non-planner. Yeah, definitely. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, it's very nice to meet you. <laughs> very nice to meet you too. I yeah. thought I recognise that lady. <laughs> <laughs> I love your channel. Well, you're very oh, kind. <laughs> Thank you very much. And a much. friend recommended it to me, and I love your indigo dine and lots of things that you've done. Thank you're you. You're an inspiration. You're very kind. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Sorafil stand now with the lovely yeah. Sorafil girls, and this is the last of your five quilts it is, here yeah. at the yeah. uh, festival. So tell us a bit about this one. So this was my first quilts, and it's made from what I kind of call crumb blocks. So each of these squares yeah. is like an individual block, and I've pieced them, and I've basically sewn scraps together to create these. Yeah. And then I've used the quilt as you go method that I talked about earlier. Yeah. And yeah, and then I've hand quilted it and machine quilted it and added loads of stuff in. And I think that's what I first liked about this. It's got a swimming badge. It. It's got your swimming badge. Well, swimming badge. That's nice, I like that. But I, what I really liked was um, this lovely hand stitching and then yeah. the machine stitching. And that I really like that mixture. I've Thank never you. done that and I don't know why I haven't because it's very effective looking. Yeah, I like the contrast of it I between the, the machine made and then the handmade. And I just like that contrast. Like these big yellow <laughs> stitches, that's sock yarn. That's sock yarn. So it's, I wanted the stitch, you know, and there's, you can see this old, there's an old duvet colour here and a badge. And then I like a scrappy binding as well. Ah, yeah, talk about the binding. So the bi like is made up again of scraps so joined together and then turned into a binding and I just think it works with the, the overall feeling yeah. if it was like one colour I think I don't know it'd be more like a frame and I want it to be part That's of it right. yeah and has this got a funky back or has this got quite a plain back oh it's funky oh this has got a fun back look and this is where I think you see the stitches to good effect yeah exactly because you see your big bold yellow sock yarn here yeah. and then the machine quilted bits here yeah and it's I think like this is great corduroy in there and African wax and just all fabrics I love and so when we talk about quilting with uh, people yeah I'm a bit evangelical about always keeping the same weight of fabric oh okay and so um, you've got corduroy in here and yeah. workman's clothes yeah and furnishing and fabric tell but me about that then I find because I use mainly recycled fabric that, and once you've it, because this is quite densely quilted, it does behave itself. And the weights, there's denim there next to like a lightweight shirting, and it's fine. I think that point about quilting it quite closely. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've encouraged me to stop telling people they can't use uh, they can't use fabric unless it's all the same weight. Amazing. Because I even sort of say, oh, you know, you can't use Liberty with quilting weight cotton. Oh, okay. But you kind of can. You, can, you can't absolutely use. can. Yeah. Some of this has got curtain fabric in, like really heavy 60s or 70s curtain well, fabric. This, that's what I love about all these quilts that we've looked at is the amount of memory and the amount of you there is in them. Yeah. And I just love that. I really oh, do. thank you. So thanks so much for talking to me. And um, we'll. Uh, Look forward to the next. Oh yeah, there'll be more next the year. Next festival of quilts. Absolutely. And there'll be even more quilts. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Bye bye. Bye.
I really love because you get a nice big area of pattern and it shows really well. And then I break it up with our woven stripes that we get from India. These are hand woven in India and I absolutely love them. We've just done these two color stripes which I, I find them very strong and vigorous and I particularly like that deep teal with black. There's something rich and dark about that which makes a nice border. Does anybody agree? Do you like that effect? No? Okay. Uh, so yes. there we've got uh, the Hokusai uh, chrysanthemums, I think they are. And, uh, and then there's, that was taken from <clears throat> a wonderful series of folk dances. I used to do folk dances, and I used to love the big skirts with huge ribbons of pattern on them. And so I did a fabric called Embroidered Flower, which is just rows and rows of different patterns that you might find on it dancing skirt in Yugoslavia or someplace. Exactly. And then this is um, called cloisonne, and that's the same fabric, different colorway, and how different those look. Mm. Um, what's so interesting about this pattern, we had it for years in our classics, and then we dropped it for a while. We brought it back, because we really like it. And there's the sunflowers in a nice dark colorway. And then on the back, we've got lotus leaf. You like that, huh? This is 108 inch wide backing with sateen. It also makes fabulous dancing pants. If you want like great big sailor trousers to dance around on your, when you go on your cruise with your big picture hat, you know. For those who don't know, we just brought out the range of 108 inch wide backing fabrics. Yeah. So, so here is the cover of the book, and I'm very glad it's here because the cover of the book is a little bit soft. They didn't get the dark richness. Look how deep and rich these colors are. That's almost black, and it looks a little bit too soft on the cover. But now you've seen it, and you know how rich and dark that whole quilt is. Look at the way these two color stripes work in here, um, and how vivid the color is. There's something amazing about woven uh, threads as opposed to uh, a printed uh, pattern. So I, li I like very much the way that looks. And on the back here, we've got Brandon's Jumble, which is a great fabric which I use a great deal with prints. I think it works very well. All of that kind of leather and gold uh, I did something which looks like a library, just kind of a nice, you know, slot of, of books. And that looks very fun, and, and, and if you look through the book, you'll see how this quilt is sitting in the library with all the books. And, um, yeah, we've got Nobi Fiori again. It's incredible, like so many other, there's a, a very kind of warm, ochre colorway with just touches of lavender. Sort of cool it down a bit, a little bit of sky. I always think this colorway looks like a tray of fruit cakes. <laughs> or biscuits of some kind. And there, that used to be one of our biggest selling fabrics. That's the very first fabric I ever designed. It's called um, Roman glass, and that's the Byzantine colorway. So Byzantine Roman glass, and that's what's on the edge of our building. By the way, if you hate doing binding, please invite me to lunch and I will sit there and I will bind you. <laughs> I love binding. I don't ever sew my quilts because other people do who get everything right. But I love to sit and do the finishing binding. Oh. We wanted to ask you, because you're very, very busy, lots of book signings and all of that, and it's really inspirational it's called the inspiration gallery mm. to see these quilts and i wanted to particularly ask you i've just bought this right i have no idea why because right. i have so much fabric at home and so mm. much of your fabric mm. and i do a lot so what i wanted to ask you was your colors your designs your patterns all speak for themselves mm. your quilt designs are very very simple yeah so I'd just be interested to hear you say a little bit about that because that's what I love about mm. your quilts. Right. Well, 
the th what I try to do with my quilts is to make them very simple to construct. And also because then it shows off the print and the color. So I'm trying to, you know, give us a nice square or a big diamond so that you get to the big scale of the fabric and it isn't too chopped up into tiny little exactly. pieces that are fiddly to do. I like I like that to be simple because what I feel is our fabrics are kind of baroque. Exactly. You know, they speak as you say, speak for themselves. They they're dramatic. Um, what's interesting is you bought this this stack of fabrics. This is the very first pattern I ever made, and this is Roman glass. So I'm going to just show it close to the camera. And I and, love. And, and it comes in all those different colorways. That's what I love. Yeah. I just yeah. love how. You this take. this is our most popular one for yeah. years. Byzantine Roman glass. Why that one? Do you think that colorway? I don't know. Well, this fabric works so well as a blender. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it's very good between uh, well, like with Civil War prints. Yeah. And or you know, a, a solid print. A lot of people like brown quilts mm. and kind of mm. sepia. Mm. Kind of Doesn't dumb, scare the horses. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you know. Um, now I, that's interesting. You say that because that's how it feels to me. Like a lot of quilting is don't scare the horses. Yes. Stay within the rigidly defined rules and. Yeah. Um, you know, don't risk anything. These quilts mm. are risky. No, uh, I'm so glad, okay. you, I'm so okay. glad you said that because um, if you took broke down the quilts into units, you'd see that they're really primarily broken up into squares. Yeah, but she's meaning the colour and the scale. Of the That's matter. right. When I was coming on to that, and mm. uh, they and often they, the structures are taken from old traditional structures, but it's the colour and pattern from mm. our fabrics that make them look more intimidating and intriguing and maybe threatening to some people who aren't used to using colour. It's that part, I think. It's the uh, the boldness of them. So I've made a number of quilts using your just your fabrics mm. and Philip's as well, because mm. I love his stuff too. And people say, oh, that's really nice. It's far too bold for me. Mm. And so what we're mm. trying to do with colour is tame colour. Mm. And a lot of people... I'm interested to hear you say that. Yeah, mm. I mean, because a lot of people think, you know, I don't know how to deal with it when they think of connotations like graffiti or high contrast, like clowns in the circus and crashing colours. Mm. We're trying to create colour harmony. Harmony. Mm. Yes. We're yes. Power to colour, because no colour sits alone. Every colour is affected by its neighbours. And, you know, if you want to create a palette that's crashing and loud, then that should be consistent throughout, so the eye travels. But it's also, also making colour um, sing, you know, by putting shades of colors together and not having a distracting note. Very often people put nice rich colors yeah. and then they'll stick in something white. Which takes or your eyes. Yellow. It's exactly. what you were saying about the white. Yes. Rub a tea bag over it. Yes. Yes. Just yes. to make exactly. it disappear. Exactly. So for like for instance, um, even it's like putting on a bit of lipstick. Or mm. you're not gonna cover your face all with that whole lipstick. <laughs> Yeah. Put in the, or when you're making carrot soup and you put in a little bit of ginger yeah. or a little bit of curry yeah. powder, yeah. you don't bang in the whole packet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's it just adding all that cherry on the top of the cookie. But some of these quilts do look like they've got a lot of ginger in and a mm. lot of lipstick on. Well, I like but it's drama. Consistent. I like drama. Yeah, you know, I, I went to drama school when I was first starting out, deciding. Was I going to be an actor? Was I going to be a dancer? Was I going to be a photographer? Was I going to be an artist? And finally, um, I tried to be an artist, but I found that textiles were just so irresistible and they were so appealing that I got really stuck in that and I'm fine with that. because Well, it, we're happy I, you did. Yeah, and I can express myself perfectly yeah. through yeah. putting textiles together. But I want that drama. I want the curtain to go up and the music to start. And, I, and that's what I think I, I love. I thought my question was going to be, your shapes are squares, oblongs, mm. very little else. Yeah. None of this cutting tiny triangles yeah. and sewing them back together, yeah. occasionally a bit of that. But I, that's what I love about the fact that the fabrics speak yeah. for themselves. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. what it should be about. And, and, and you give them the little platform yeah. to speak. That's, but, that's the and thing. there's such a rich contrast of them mm. that uh, there's so many different directions you can take all of this. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
amazing. It, it's a never-ending process, it, you know, and it, it, you know, and we don't have a theory when we start out designing. Mm -hmm. it, the colours speak to us as we're building the story. <laughs> so while he's busy signing that, then <laughs> talk a little bit about um, how you design, then, Brandon. Um, we don't we don't know until we literally start. We'll look at the inspiration for a structure and the fabric we've got. Like this Wales um, yeah. visit. Yeah. And we'll literally start cutting the fabric. We work on a vertical design wall and we'll start cutting mm. and arranging, mm. putting up the shapes. Mm. In our mind, we might have a little colour concept because we've seen a colour palette. That so how much collaboration between the two of you then? Because I find right. yours and Philip's fabrics are quite different but still hang together. Yep. Well, my fabrics, I'm the wacky, zany, well, you're the contemporary, yeah. Yeah, yeah, primitive kind of guy. But I give Keith and, Fa Keith and Philip's fabric a little bit of space, a yeah. little bit of air, yeah. mm. because put their two fabrics together and it can get like an out of focus television. Yes. You can get busy, the scale yeah. is yeah. quite strong. So my fabrics just give them a little bit of, and mm. you would never think that that would happen, but mm. that, in your mindset. But, yeah. Now, okay. you guys have to go oh, because sorry, you have a huge sorry. Come back, but sorry. Don't, don't talk with you. Yeah. I'm really good. Good. Lovely. Thank you. So, wasn't that an interesting interview with Kay Fassett and Brandon Mabley? I, I'm really grateful to both of them for being so generous with their time. Uh, it was wonderful to see them at festival, but it was absolutely brilliant to be able to talk to them and ask them the questions that are on my mind. Now, I did buy the book that they've written, which is called Kayfaset Quilts in Wales, and it's got some absolutely beautiful quilts. Those were the quilts he was talking about at the beginning of the section about them. And it's, there's some fantastic quilts in here, beautifully photographed on the, in this gorgeous castle. Just beautiful. I do love their fabri the fabrics they design. And I did bring some home with me. Now, I did, I brought home with me some fabric for a project I'm not going to tell you about in this video, but I'm going to tell you about it in a future video. <laughs> That's a teaser, isn't it? Now, those of you who have been around this channel for a little while will be familiar with the quilt that I've made for my granddaughter Agnes. Started it before she was born and she's about to be three. And the whole quilt, hand quilting of the hexagons is now finished and the quilt's pinned out, waiting for me to uh, decide which quilting pattern I'm going to use for it, because I'm going to hand quilt that one. But the hand stitching of those pieces is finished and I've been missing a hand quilted project, an English paper piece project. So I bought, I've, I've, been, I've been researching because when you do a project like that, you're going to spend an awfully long time with it. So you're going to have to, uh, you're going to want to enjoy doing it. And I've done a number of hand piece, big hand piece pieces like that before. And I thought I need to find something that I'll enjoy uh, spending maybe a couple of years making, I don't know. So it's all here in front of me, <laughs> the pattern I chose and all the fabrics, but I'm going to talk to you about that in another video. So I'm sorry to tease you with that one, but I bought the fabric for that and I already had the idea and I cut the paper templates, all of that. It's not hexagons, that's all I'll tell you. <laughs> Isn't that mean? <laughs> so apart from Cave's book and the fabric for this mystery project, I bought a quilting ruler. Now, I know what you're saying. Kate, how many quilting rulers have you got? Uh, why do you need another one? Uh, but this one is a little tiny two and a half inch ruler. And I think it's sweet and I've used it loads since I got back. It's really, really handy just to pick it up off your mat and just to trim a little two and a half inch square if that's what you're doing. Now, this here's in this bag, what's in this bag here? Quilt while you're ahead. This is the festival bag. And I found this stall where I bought the fabric that's inside here. I got really excited about it and it I had no plan for what I was going to do with it. I still don't. And I hadn't intended to buy fabric like this, but here it is. And it's Indian block printed fabric in a whole range of fantastic colors 
of blues and red and a sort of tealy colour and they all kind of hang together quite nicely. There was a, a deal for five fat quarters for an amount of money so I bought ten fat quarters and then th all the time I was selecting them and choosing each one I was thinking yes I'm, I'm going to make a quilt with this it's going to be a quilt for me and so to that end I bought the backing of the quilt as well this piece here and then I found this lovely stripe which will be the binding of the quilt because I love a striped binding on a quilt. So that's all the component parts and there's um, thoughts happening inside my head about what I might do with this, but nothing very solid or concrete just yet. So I will definitely bring you along for this quilt when I get round to taking scissors to that fabric. I did have a lovely, lovely time. Uh, I stayed over two nights, but next year I think I'm going to stay a bit longer because I was really, really tired when I got home because I tried to see everything and there just simply wasn't enough time. And so I'm going to go for a bit longer next year. And there was an idea from all the lovely, lovely people I kept bumping into. There was a lovely idea that maybe next year I should get a lime green sofa and stick it in the festival somewhere and just sit on that and chat to people take lots of snacks <laughs> so yeah who knows <laughs> I doubt it I say so I took a lot of film uh, I, I apologize for the wobble cam uh, it's really hard sometimes to film when you, what you've just got is a little um, grip on the camera uh, it would have been better if I'd had a bigger setup and been able to film more more um, carefully and more less shakily uh, alas not the case but I did take a lot of film uh, there's a lot more of Chris's interview and quite a bit more of the things that I did around and about the festival and it's this video would be three hours long if I made all of it into a video. So I'm making some extra videos that are going to go over onto my Patreon channel. So pop over to Patreon, I'll leave a link on the end card. I had a brilliant time at the festival and I can't wait to go again next year. And just one of the things that Chris said made me think that uh, maybe I should um, enter a quilt next year. What he said was that anyone can enter, none of the uh, quilts are juried by anyone, you can enter into any of the different categories. And so who knows, if I get this hand-pieced piece finished, or this one maybe finished, then it may be that uh, I'll put a quilt in next year's festival. I might do that. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, and I really enjoyed talking to Kaif and Brandon, it was the highlight of my year. It really, really was. So if you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe. Hit the notifications bell, then you'll never miss a video when I post one. And uh, pop over to Patreon, see what I'm up to there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time with something else from The Last Homely House. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Mm -hmm.